We thank you, Lord, for this day that you have given us, O King of Glory. Thank you for, gift of, uh, for the gift of life. Thank you for separating us from others, O Jehovah. And you have made us to come to your house so that we can hear your voice. Use me as a tool to reach your voice to your children this morning. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us sit. <laughs> Praise the Lord, church. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. Amen. And all the time. Amen. Let me start by thanking the vicar in charge and also the vicar, retired vicar, re-readers and the church elders and the entire choir group for welcoming me to this sanctuary today and in particular this day that is a choir day. My names are Paul Kire Kawama Denge. I love the Lord as my personal savior. I fellowship at St. John's Kiamba. I'm a choir member there, I'm a church elder there and I thank God for giving me the gift of salvation this morning. It was early when I was just a young boy, I met with Christ in a Kayo conference. And I remember the preacher who was doing it and preaching that day was the late Bishop Alexander Muge. He gave a very powerful sermon on the Last Supper and how Christ served his disciples on the Last Supper. But before he died, Christ did that, he washed the disciples' feet. And when he came to Peter, Peter told him, you want to wash my feet? You won't do it. And Christ told Peter, if I don't wash your feet, then we are not in fellowship. That's when I felt sure I've been serving the Lord all through. And if my life is not washed by the blood of Christ, then we are not in fellowship and I surrendered my life to Christ. Till today, I thank God for what he has done in my life. Praise be to God. I bring greetings from Kiamba, where I fellowship, from our Chidikon, Venerable Kevin, the church elders, and the choir group that I sing in. Today is a choir day, and this is a very special day to them. In fact, it's a birthday to them because it's only given to them one day in a an year. And for this, it is my prayer before I start preaching that we support the choir as much as possible. We did have a choir day sometimes last year in our church and the preacher who was there made an altar call. When he did that, more than 20 men came to support the choir. And today, the choir stands with a group of men of about 15 to 20 each and every practice. Praise be to God. So men, let us serve the choir. Let us serve the church. It is not in vain. And when I think about it, I see it like what David did. David, when he went to to kill Gori. David wasn't going to war. David was going to serve his brothers. But when he went to the battlefield and he served his brothers by what he was given by his father Jesse, when he emptied the bag, that is the same, same bag that the Lord gave him an opportunity to take the five stones and put in. Praise be to God. So when you serve the Lord, when you sincerely serve the Lord, the Lord will see your sincerity and the Lord will replace whatever service you have given to him with equipment to fight your enemies. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. So let us sincerely serve the Lord and the Lord will always reward us. In the book of Matthew, Chapter number 23, the Lord went to the Garden of Gethsemane. He went to pray with his disciples and the Bible tells us when he came to the, far, to the far gate, he left his disciples there 
and he called three of his major disciples. That was Peter, John, and James. And he went closer to where he was going to pray. He told them, pray so that you may not enter into temptation. The Bible tells me, when the Lord went and prayed, when he came back, he never woke John, he never woke James. He went straight to Peter, who was a church. And he told Peter, arise and pray that you may not enter into temptations. Praise be to God. He went the second time. And when he came back, he awoke the same, same Peter. Why did he awake Peter? Because he had a reason. He had promised to Peter that he would be the church. And on that church which he will build, not even the works of the devil will stand over the church. Praise be to God. This morning the Lord has separated us from other Christians. There are so many Christians in our village, even in our locality, even who are called Anglicans like us. But the Lord has separated us from them. He has brought us closer to him because God has a reason for us this morning. Praise be to God. Tell your neighbor the Lord has a reason for you this morning. And so even at that time when, when Christ went and found them asleep, he never went to the larger cloud. He still came to the three and awoke Peter who is the church. Today we are the church. And he told him, arise, pray, that you may not enter into temptations. I want you to, to ask you something. Do you know a small fish called Omena? Unajua Omena? Ask your neighbor, Unajua Omena? I'm sure some of you had it for supper last night, so do you want to smile, son? Omena is found in the water. Na omena ikiwa kwa maji, huanga ime kondoa macho. Ukiteka omena kutoka kwa maji, ata iperekwe sokoni, bado omena imefungua macho. Ukienda ununua omena upeleke nyumbani, Uwashia omena, defried, kwa mafuta ambayo imechamuka kabisa, omena, bado ufungua macho. Toa omena, kwa mafuta peleka mezani, wekelea omena kwa meza, weka ugani hapa toko wa shimo uweke mko ndani, ata ikio uko ndani, ya ugani, bado omena imefana nini. Bado omena imekondoa macho. For us cubes, atujue kula samaki sana. Karibu ukiweko kwa mdomo ikuulize wa adwara omena. Kwa sabu si atujue kula omena. Lakini bado omena imefanya nini? Imekondoa macho. My brothers and sisters, a time has come for the church of Christ to open his spiritual eyes wide open. Hallelujah. So that when the blessings are coming, and when Christ is coming to bless you, your blessings won't go because you will receive it, for you have opened your spiritual eyes. Hallelujah. Let's appreciate the Lord. Uliza muenzako, je, umekondoa macho ya kiroho kama umena? In our first in our second reading today, we did it from the book of Acts chapter number 12. And before I go to the, to the sermon, there's this king who was called King Herod. And whenever in the Bible that King Herod is mentioned, there is something that happens. When Christ was born and King Herod is mentioned, children were killed. The second time that King Herod is made being mentioned is during the death of John the Baptist. The third time that King Herod is being mentioned, it was during the death of Christ. And the fourth time that King Herod is being mentioned in the Bible, it is in Acts chapter number 12. And the Bible says, around this time King Herod began to persecute some members of the church. 
He had James, the brother of John, put to death by a sword. When he saw that this priest the Jew, he went on to arrest Peter. This was during the time of festive and relieved bread. After his arrest, Peter was put in jail where he was handed over to be guarded by four squads of soldiers each. Herod planned to put him on trial on, pub, on trial in public after Passover. So Peter was kept in prison and he was kept guarded by soldiers. But the people of the church prayed earnestly to God for him. I want to talk about the spirit of Herod and how this spirit has made we as Christians so weak and it has fear made us so fearful that we are not active in the church. Once, see this spirit at the first time when he took all the children of me and the kid. The second time, here comes Herod during the John the Baptist and he made John be killed. Then the third time it is during Christ's death and this being the fourth time, he takes John, the brother of John, James, the brother of John, and made him kill with a sword. This made the Jew people rejoiced so much for what Herod had commanded to be done. And today, he went ahead and took Peter, who is the church, and made him put in prison. My brothers and my sisters, we have just begun by saying that it is a time that we should open our spiritual eyes so that we may not enter into temptations. Today, we have our brothers and our sisters, our children, our parents, who are in prison today. Yes, they are Peters, they have been baptized, they have been confirmed, they are even members of the church. They are so, they are so good, they can even join the choir, they can join other groups in the church, and the church becomes so vibrant. But the spirit of Herod has gone for them, taken them to captivity, put them in prison, and they are there guarded by soldiers of devils each and every moment. When given, wameweko katikati ya pombe, when given, wameweko katikati ya mashaka, so they don't know themselves. And here is Peter who was put in prison and guarded by soldiers. He didn't know himself when he was there. He didn't have any liberty when he was there. He was guarded by four soldiers. That means all the sides, Peter was guarded. But I want to thank God for verse number five that says, when Peter was in prison, there was a church somewhere that was honestly praying for Peter. Praise be to God. We are the church today. And we are the church today. We are the sober-minded people today. And we are the people who have opened their spiritual eyes today. And we should be honestly praying for our brothers and our sisters who are unable even to come and serve in the church. And so that church that was somewhere rocked together praying for Peter and Peter was in prison. You have a son today. You have a brother today. You have a relative today that is in prison today. He doesn't even bother to come to church. He's even not even interested to know what the church is going on or what is going on in the church. Is it not our responsibility today to take up that responsibility or pray for that Peter who is in church, who is in prison? My brothers and my sisters, it is a challenge. What position have you taken? What position have you taken to those who are in prison today, even in your own house? When Gine, to have a mind, to me, to have a mind, to have a mind, to have a mind, to have a TV, 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 to have a T
to pray for that Peter who is in prison. Praise be to God. Look at this. Our enemies. My Ureka Haria Hagov, Makeura Hagov, Modena was sand. Yet they are baptized, yet they are confirmed. What is your responsibility today? Take up the burden so that we can pray for them, honestly pray for them, and then turn back and come back to church. Hallelujah. When Peter was, uh, when the church was praying and Peter was tied in the prison, the Bible tells us clearly that a light shone from heaven the night before he was to be given out for persecution. A light shone from heaven and the, uh, an angel of God visited Peter when he was in prison. The guards who were there guarding Peter never heard the voice of the angel. Neither did they see the light that was shining from heaven. And a voice of the angel spoke to Peter and told him, Peter, arise. Praise be to God. Peter, arise. The guards never heard that. They never saw the light that shone in prison. Peter, put on your sandals. And the Bible tells us the chains that had tied Peter fell off from his hands. And the angel told Peter, let us go. Hallelujah. A time will come when you won't believe it. Those who are praying go there. And those who live in the house. And those young people who slept over. Wakaenda disco jana wamekuja asubui wamelewa. They are your sons, our sons and daughters. If we honestly pray, those chains will be broken. Praise be to God. Those chains will be broken. And you won't believe it. They might not even come to the first seat here. Lakini watakwambia asubui, mom, can we go to church together? Can you long for that? When your husband, your dear husband, who has never been to church, will ask you one day, give me, let me go to the bathroom. Can we go to church together? Can we share the same vehicle? Can we go together? Hallelujah. You are sad. Who is lost somewhere? Your daughter, who is lost somewhere? One day he will tell you, Daddy, I'll accompany you to the church. Then why you have done your work? Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Even your workers. You have been praying for your workers. But one day, they'll tell you, brother, you can start a fellowship here. We'll join you. Imagine you in that company, starting a fellowship in the company. Why? Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Praise be to God. And so Peter was walked out of prison by the angel. The Bible tells me he went past the first gate. The guards never saw Peter, they never heard him. But he went past the first gate. He went past the second gate. And he came to an iron gate. And the Bible tells us, no one could have opened that gate. But when he came to that gate, the gate opened itself for Peter to go out. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Recently a church. It is not by baptism. It is not by confirmation. It is not by being made or being enrolled as a Kama member or a Mother's Union member or being a full member of St. Paul's that can make you, that qualifies you to go to heaven. Praise be to God. You might have gone through this gate, the first and the second gate. When Peter went past the first and the second gate, he was still a prisoner. He was still in prison. There is a dark gate and this is an iron gate and this is the gate of salvation. When Peter came to this gate, it opened itself for Peter to go out. Praise be to God. I want to tell you, serving Christ might not really qualify you to go to heaven, but salvation will qualify you to go to heaven. So when the third gate opened for itself and Peter went past the first gate and the last gate, this was the iron gate, and he went, he went outside, the, outside the prison. That is when he came to his senses and noticed it is sure that Christ has brought me out of prison and about free people, uh, a free person. Praise be to God. You might try to serve the Lord in the choir. You might try to serve the Lord from wherever you are. But I want to promise you today, the correct and the really serving of the Lord is only done 
when you have gone through that, that gate, the gate of salvation. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. When you only go through that gate of salvation, it's only when you truly serve God. And that is when you will have a promise that your name is there in the book of life. A preacher who was preaching in our church on Sunday gave a very exciting or rather educative example and he told us there was a father who really loved his son. And this father used to take up his son whenever the son saw the father, he would come, the son would come running, a small boy, he would take the son and I'm too bad you are a shida. On a Sunday morning, this father went to the bathroom. Zile bafu za uko inje. Si zile zandani tumezoya za uko inje. Akaenda kwa uko. Arafu akatoka kwa bafu wa metujifunga tawe. Akakuja. Kijana akamuona. And the boy ran to the father. When the boy ran to the father, Baba akachukua mtoto wakamtupa juu. Maria Konza. The second time, on the third time when he threw up the boy, the towel ile ilikuwa mechifunga, ikafunguka. What will you do? Is it the towel or the boy? The towel or the boy? Kumbuka chini ni concrete. Kwa hivyo ukijana kikonga chini, anaweza anaweza enda bad. So, this is your decision. You either leave the boy to fall down or pick the towel to cover yourself. But the dad decided, let the towel go, let me pick the boy. It's more important than my body at this time. Praise be to God. Our oh, Lord Jesus Christ saw us and knows us in all corners in all ways that we live. And he made a very wise decision for your life. And he said, it is because of you that I'm going to be put on that cross, naked as I am, for you to have salvation. Praise be to God. Let me, he said, let me go naked and be put on that cross for you to be saved. This morning, Christ is calling you and he's telling you, there is a dark gate and this is the gate of salvation. If you go through this gate of salvation, you are not a prisoner anymore. Let us serve the Lord. Let us serve the Lord. And let us accept that Christ came for me, he came for you, and Christ is ready to save us. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.